social change, just like our honorees demonstrate the enormous impact that women are making in our social and political consciousness. So for me, um, I didn't have plan B. So to not be a surgeon was just not an option. And then television came along and I ended up truly having parallel careers where to me being a correspondent made me a better physician and being a physician I think made me a better correspondent. I mean the skill set is the same. If I'm sitting on a patient's bedside or if I'm talking on camera, the, the point is to take complicated stuff and make it palatable without being condescending. But the strength comes um, through self-discovery. I really think it comes through the tough times, and I think most women won't realize they're strong until somewhere mid-30s or beyond. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I'm thinking my grandmother, my parent, I was the first in my family to go to college, so I didn't have those kind of role models or career women, but my grandmother said to me, honey, falling on your face is at least a forward movement. <laughs> and, uh, and she was so right. I'm trying to teach my girls, and I think it's a good policy to just, whatever is really scaring you, go toward it, because it's probably right where you need to be.
I, I feel like we need to be more aggressively raising critical consumers of media um, because, uh, you know, all of us here, all of us here are going to be pushing as hard as we can on media and creating positive imagery, but we can't deny that, that the force moving in the other direction is so enormous. I mean, I was in Cairo and um, I had this a veiled woman, we were talking about the veil specifically, and she said, um, you know, I don't understand why you American women think you have it so good. You know, I actually don't think you ever put something on that you really want to wear. And I don't have any friends who have bulimia or anorexia. You know, when I walk down the street, people don't ogle at me. Um, and that really made me think. And, and right after she said that, I went back to my hotel room. And in the Hilton Hotel in Cairo, I turned on the television, and there's a music video with a man sliding his credit card down the backside of a woman. And, uh, and I thought, well, <laughs> there you go. I don't have it so good as an American woman. Um, so if we're not raising really critical consumers, both men and women, um, in our children and talking to them about, you know, who made that video, why did they make those choices, you know, who decided to put that on the air, who's making money here, um, and, and what are we pushing forward, I, I don't think we'll ever get anywhere. So um, I think that my girls are going out the door dressed slightly inappropriately but with their own voice and um, I don't think anybody's going to sell them any swamp land in Florida. A couple of years ago there was a, uh, I think it was about two years ago, there was a national study and they asked young girls, 8 to 10, what do you want to be when you grow up? Over 60% said famous. So that is an issue. And I think part of the issue that really goes to what Abby was talking about was this puritanical idea we have in society where we won't talk about sex or sexual education in preschool and first grade, but we have no problem showing anything on television. And the, the hypocrisy is that our young girls have phenomenal mixed messages. So when they walk out of the door and we're holding our breaths, you know, there, there's a reason why. You know, I keep thinking we need to stop. Well. We need to stop calling it content because that's precisely what it doesn't have. Well, you know, but, but I'd that's like fame argue, without. Yeah, I like. I'd like to make your point out, or and yours too, Abby. It's time to become critical consumers. I think you said that first. Um, we we don't have to keep the the sound on or the video on. I mean, we can make different kinds of choices. And this year, for example, when there was such rampant sexism in the media and the coverage of Hillary Clinton's candidacy. Uh, you probably didn't watch as much of it as I did, but we were auditing it. So I can tell you that I could have filled a five-hour night with just one sexist comment after the other that you would find absolutely appalling and say, surely no one said that on television or wrote that in the New York Times, the Chicago Sun-Times, or whatever, but they did. So we did a program on it, but we also enlisted a group of women to go calling on a network. And that call got answered. And some of those people got censored, and some things meaning they got talked to and asked not to repeat such comments again. So when we do take, again, power and responsibility and marry them together, our power of, uh, consum as a consumer, we can make a difference. We're not victims. Nancy, Pat, Abby, you've just done a wonderful job. It was informative. It was insightful. We learned a little bit more about you personally than we would have learned if you had just stood up and said thank you for this award. So let's give them a round of applause.